We're going yeah. live and well, you're not on. Just yet. hit 3:30, oh. <laughs> so we'll switch spots when okay. it's time. All right. It says we are live on Facebook. All we right. Hey, happy Friday! It's August the seventh, right? August seventh. August the seventh. And it was a great day today. We had our principals and our district administrators together. Principals are back. They get a few days off during July. And so it's always nice when we come back and we set the direction for the year and get started on getting ready for kids. And I know that's, that's been uh, the, the challenge and the direction and the topic, but we are eager to just make sure that we have a great plan set up and then um, go forward as things as things allow us. You know what I'm thinking? This is the first fireside chat in a while where nothing significant had changed from the week before. So we got a guidance two weeks ago. I feel plans are starting to get in place. We actually are feeling fairly good about where we're at and what we're doing, so. And if you'll notice, we have a different background today. We're at the high school library. It is a beautiful space with some barn wood and new floor covering and new furniture. Um, this was a project of the high school staff last year and the um, administrators just put their own uh, sweat into it. And we're pretty excited about having this space available for the students when they come back. The students saw it and said, hey, everybody's gonna wanna hang out in there. And that was the goal. So it's pretty cool. So agenda today, what we're gonna do is um, in a second here, I'm gonna start on uh, explaining some different models. Uh, the models that we came out with last week, just to review those um, so everyone's familiar with how all the dots connect. Um, we'll also have had a lot of questions from parents about what does a daily schedule look like for my student this upcoming year? So we'll have an example of that. Uh, and then Dr. Johnson, I think we're just gonna then open it up for questions to help our folks clarify anything they need. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think, I think that's what we have today. We have Rob Bonner here and OSAA came out with some guidance this week. So we have Rob Bonner here on, um, on standby. And um, as we move into the fireside chat today, we'll all vacate my spot and give it to Rob and let him tell you a little bit about athletics. All right, so with that, I'll jump into the models. Right. So Jason, I'll start sharing my screen here. Now, one of the things I want you to know is that Joel is very good at creating visual graphs and models. So um, he's going to present that to you. And then I'm all about the talk, <laughs> all about the talk. So I will- She kind um, of helps clear things up. Yeah. All right. So I give it the elementary twist. She keeps, she keeps it fun. I'm kind of boring sometimes, so. All right. Uh, I'll agree with that. <laughs> but boring's good, you know. I could stand for a few boring days. <sighs> All right. So uh, nothing has changed in the models that we're offering parents. Um, so for elementary, you've got reg your regular instruction model. And uh, that looks a little different whether schools are open or closed. So if you register, we expect most people will select our regular options. So when schools are closed at the elementary level and you're in this model, uh, your students will be, at the beginning of the year, just like every year, your student will be assigned a grade level teacher. Uh, and that teacher will, they'll have, a, you know, probably a low 20, uh, a number of students in their classroom, usually around 22 or so. Uh, and that teacher is going to provide daily video instruction and support online when schools are closed. And we'll show an example of that here in a second. When schools open, that student will stay with that same teacher and classmates, and they'll just begin um, back in school, and they'll pick up right where they left off. So as we talked about last week, the uh, most recent uh, requirements from the state of Oregon, grades K through three, they have, um, they will more than likely be able to start sooner than grades four through 12 if schools are open. Um, and then for, we know that we're gonna have some parents that even when schools are able to reopen, they are going to say, you know what, we live with a uh, grandpa or grandma, or we have someone in a high risk population. So even when schools are open, we plan to keep our student at home and do uh, full virtual learning. And what that will look like is that teacher uh, will just continue that daily rhythm of um, providing online instruction. Um, that teacher will stay the same the whole year. And that's why uh, registration is so important because we're wanting to make sure that we have spots for those students that their parents are saying now, you know what, things are too shaky right now and we plan to keep our kid uh, home throughout the entire school year. 
And then finally, there's one other option, our new homeschool partner program that we've been talking a lot, a lot about the last few weeks with Mr. Olkers. And this is uh, different than the full virtual. And why it's different is because in this model, parents are able to pick the curriculum they want from a menu of options. Um, and they are the main facilitator of learning rather than having a Crook County School District teacher provide that daily learning. Um, the parent will work with Mr. Olkers to facilitate the learning throughout the day, each and every day. So uh, if you're looking for, we wanted to provide some flexibility for parents. So if that's interested to you, interesting to you, that homeschool partner program option is for you. So one thing new that I wanted to share, because we've had a lot of parents ask, what does a daily schedule look like for my student when schools are closed and I'm in the regular instruction or full year distance learning model? So if you look up here, you can see that's this box of these two options. So what does a daily schedule look like? Because what we heard from a lot of parents is that, yeah, last spring was great, but we need a little more um, if our student's gonna continue to stay home. So we put this together and have been sharing it with our staff. So a normal day uh, for our elementary when schools are closed would look like uh, the first 15 minutes or so, uh, teachers would just do a welcome and social time with peers through live video. Um, Cause we know it's really important for students just to really be able to connect with their peers, socialize and, and you know, even have a little fun um, through, a, through a Zoom or a live video. From there, the teacher would move into um, an English language arts uh, direct instruction. So they provide a live video instruction or a screencast uh, explaining the lesson for the day, the English lesson. And then students would get off the computers because we know that um, a lot of parents are not wanting their student uh, getting screen time, too much screen time all day. So we'd build in the teacher would give that lesson digitally. And then um, we we're providing workbooks for our, all our elementary families. So the teacher will say, okay, here's how um, the lesson on how you would do pages two and three. Okay, now you have 30 minutes log off. Um, the teacher will be available during that time to help students that need it, but students will then have a break to go practice that skill independently um, at home. Then they'll bring the students back. Uh, there'll be another live video, same thing, uh, live direct instruction on math or a pre-recorded lesson. And then students would jump back into their math workbook, so um, they're not always working on the screen. That, um, we've had a couple questions of, well, what if um, for my family, it works better if we work in the evening? We'll make sure those lessons are recorded so that parents can access those when they need to. We'll then have a lunch break. Um, students will, uh, teachers will bring students back one more time, quick 15 minute lesson, providing information on what the afternoon looks like. And this is when we do uh, non-core subjects like um, health or social studies projects. So. Then the, the student will work with their uh, at home on uh, you know, a number of projects, whatever the teacher has planned for that day with again, the teacher being available for support. So that's what a normal school day would look like for a family. And then one final piece, because um, we know our teachers and uh, really want to make sure each and every kid is, is doing okay and checking in. So the teachers will check in um, with three or four students. They'll schedule a, a, a independent time that last part of the day for a number of students to say, hey, I'm, I'm checking in with you this day. So that way they'll go through their roster and each week they're doing an individual one-on-one -on -one check in with a, a student and family. So that is essentially what that day would look like. We're gonna pause there and Dr. Johnson uh, is gonna fill in on just a little bit more about uh, elementary and what that potentially will look like. All right, so I just want you to picture this in your mind. There's actually three streams for elementary. One stream is almost like pre-COVID and then the COVID where the student has their teacher, they have their peers. And when they can't be in school, they're getting that teaching from the teacher at home. And when they can be in school, they're getting that teacher from the teacher at school. That's one stream. The middle stream is for those families who don't want their child coming on campus. They will be assigned a teacher and they will be with that teacher all year, but they just stay at home receiving instruction planned by that teacher. And then the at home school support or the homeschool support is the parent is really the teacher and they're picking that curriculum and it's much like the homeschool that we are familiar with pre COVID. Uh, I think one of the things that parents need to know is that we are really, uh, you know, our goal is to have the children back in the classrooms. And 
that's really what we're planning around. We had a week last week with no cases in Crook County, which is a great thing because that's going to lower the metrics, which brings us closer to bringing all the students back in full time. So keep doing your part in keeping COVID contained and we'll keep doing our part in planning to get your children back here and to provide good service until they can be back. Perfect. Let's take a look at what a, a middle school schedule and the models look like. So let's get this screen back on here. Middle school. All right. So for middle school, the options are somewhat similar and then a few different, uh, a few different caveats that are a little different than the elementary. So just like elementary, there's um, a regular instruction. And we believe that you know, 80, 90% of our families will say, okay, we just want to give us the regular model. So when uh, things are closed, the students will have a consistent daily schedule with four or five classes per quarter. And I'll give some details on that in a little bit, um, whether it's four or five. And uh, each day the students will log into their classes at that time, the teacher will provide a daily video lesson and then provide support as students work um, digitally from home on their assignments. When schools then are open, the schedule won't change for the student, but this now they'll, they'll be able to go back to school and we'll have obviously some precautionary measures in place, um, but they'll keep the same schedule, same teachers and be able to seamlessly transition into the building. For those parents that um, when schools are open or are able to reopen, if they do not wanna send their school, we have an option for you, our Crook County School District online program. Um, families can choose this, it's a full schedule of self-paced online classes. Uh, and uh, we, we have an online co coordinator, Natalie Everhard, that will help um, coordinate those classes and provide support. And then additionally, with those two options, there's a hybrid option where a family can say, hey, I only wanna take uh, math and English uh, first and second period in the, the middle school, but we wanna take our art class and maybe our history class through a self-paced class online. So we do have that hybrid option as well. Um, when schools are permitted to reopen, we do have to have, though, if you're in the hybrid option, you will have to return um, for your CCMS classes. Those will be taking place in person and not virtually when schools reopen. So if you do not want your student to come back to school, even when schools are reopened, uh, and you have a middle schooler, you would choose the online option, or like uh, at the elementary level, we do have that homeschool partner program available. Um, and the difference there is the parent does selects the curriculum from a menu of options, and uh, Mr. Olkers is the teacher of record and helps work through students or work with parents and support their students. So here's what a daily schedule looks like for the middle school. And it really looks the exact same as when the building will be open. So teachers are gonna have their prep early in the morning, first thing, so schools will start uh, around nine o'clock. Um, so you'd have, for example, first period math, where you have a direct instruction video uh, a teacher provides the lesson for the day, either through Zoom or it's been pre-recorded. And then, so that's the first team, first 15 minutes of class. And then the, the remainder half hour, 45 minutes will be, um, the students are working on the assignments that the teacher has assigned with the teacher available to support them. Very similar. Uh, second period, you'd have a, a video lesson during, uh, during that time and then uh, release to independent work time. Students would have a lunch break and then they'd have two more periods where the teacher's providing a daily video lesson because that's what we heard parents really want is they want a daily interaction with the teacher as well as some student to work time. One thing different about the, the middle school that I'm really excited that they're offering is what they heard from parents was that having seven periods all online last spring was overwhelming for parents or students. And I totally understand that. It would be hard to keep up with seven different classes. So what they're having is you, they'll have, students will have four core classes. So math, English, social studies, and science. And then for those parents that uh, that's all they wanna do, that is totally fine. You have those four classes. For those parents that want their student to have an online elective class, there will be an optional period that students can take a virtual elective class. Um, but it's optional, it's for parents um, that think, you know what, let's, let's, take a, let's take an extra elective. So that's how the middle school schedule will look. Um, and as school does return and students are re able to reopen, those students that chose not to have an elective class, they'll just be assigned one um, when they uh, return to the building. 
more details on the middle school. <laughs> How are you doing, Mr. Hawk? <laughs> For those of you that don't know, we had our admin uh, retreat today. So Sarah has been talking all day. <laughs> so uh, it just feels par for the course. Yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to let you know that teachers are planning to be able to deliver excellent instruction uh, regardless of the model that, that you are choosing. Um, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, we had a fireside chat with our staff and we had almost 100 people on the chat yesterday just getting questions answered and getting their self squared around and ready to serve you when, when the schools open again or when we're ready to bring kids back. So Dr. Hoff, I'm wondering if you want me to do the next one. No, Are you good? I'm ready, I'm All ready. Right. We scheduled these little breaks because these uh, take a while to talk through. So let's, our last, our last school we're talking about will be um, the high school. So let me pull that one up and get that one going. All right. All right, so there's our high school option. So let's take a look here. So uh, very similar to the middle school, you've got a regular instruction option and we expect most, uh, most of our students will fall into this option. When schools are closed, students will have a consistent daily four classes uh, per quarter. And just like the middle school, teachers will provide daily instruction for each of those courses and as well as be able to support students during that time period. And that's when things are closed. When things are open, students will have that exact same schedule. And we did this so that we can have a seamless transition back from schools are open to schools are closed and students have the same schedule, the same teachers and the same classmates. At the high school, they also have the online option where if uh, the parents know that, you know, even when schools are open that they uh, would prefer them to stay home. We have that full self-paced online option. Uh, just like the middle school, you could take a half schedule, uh, full online and a half schedule in the building. Uh, same rules as the middle school when schools do open for those classes that you're taking virtually through the high school, you would have to come to take those classes because that's the way teachers will be doing no longer high school teachers won't be doing virtual instruction when classes are uh, able to resume. And then finally, in addition, pioneer will have a very same structure where students have classes some online um, and when schools reopen we will have some in person as well. I don't know if you're just doing a really good job explaining or, or I've heard it so many times that it it's, starts to make sense. It starts to make sense, but <laughs> it really, you explain it enough and you really, uh, you really start to understand the models we're offering. <laughs> All right. And uh, very similar to the middle school, what a daily schedule would look like for a high school student is uh, they'd have math, uh, you know, for example, first period class, first 15, 20 minutes would be a a live uh, synchronous instruction from the teacher where they're providing a Zoom or they've done a pre-recorded screencast uh, explaining the lesson for the day. And then the remainder of the period would be the students working on whatever assignments are associated with that lesson and the teachers available to support. So they'd have uh, four periods throughout the day, each period having a uh, special live uh, instruction to start off the period. And uh, that's the high school. Great job. All right. Thank you, Dr. Hoff. You're welcome. So you can post your questions if you have questions on that, and we'll make sure that we answer them. The other things we want to do today are, of course, get in our athletic information, and perhaps now's a good time to do that, and you can take a I'll break take a from break. talking. And, um, <laughs> Rob, come on over. All we'll, right. We're going to we'll give you spots. the whole stage, Rob. Get the whole space. Whole stage. Thank you so much. All right, I'm a little shorter. Might get hidden by the flower there. Um, so I'm excited. There's finally, um, you know, something to report uh, on the athletic front. And um, first, if you if you're not familiar with the 2020-2021 OSWA season calendar, um, I urge you to go on to OSWA website, uh, the homepage there, and um, check out the. 2020-2021 OSAA season calendar. Um, the OSAA, um, I'm, I'm so impressed with them, their, their flexibility and their kind of, their insight into this. Um, the executive board, Peter Weber, uh, all the folks at OSAA, they've put together a plan now that's going to get us through this year. So, of course, all this is, is um, subject to ODE, OHA guidance, um, you know, governor's guidance. So, so these things could get pushed out, could be canceled. I mean, who knows? But 
Um, the bright side is there's three seasons uh, this year, all sports are represented um, and OSAA activities will start in December. So uh, fall, I'll talk about that in a second, but um, starting in December, our traditional winter sports, uh, wrestling and basketball, uh, dance is a little bit later. Um, a lot of this stuff is, is um, uh, quite a bit different than what we're used to. Um, each activity there's gonna be, so season two, we're calling that, is going to be two weeks of practice, so nine practices, seven competition weeks, and then a, a week at the end, um, I don't have all this committed to memory, but a week at the end, they, they're calling it culminating week, the OSAA culminating week. So each activity should have, we hope it to be a state tournament. Um, that's dependent on guidance at the time, um, indoor, outdoor activities, you know, gathering sizes, it's dependent on a lot of things, but um, each sport should have two practice weeks, seven competition weeks, and then a culminating week. Uh, so we're really, really excited about that. Um, season two, as I said, is wrestling and basketball. Uh, season three is our traditional fall sports, cross country, volleyball, soccer, football. Uh, that's set to kick off uh, in February, February 22nd. Uh, and again, two practice weeks, seven competition weeks, and then an OSAA culminating week. Finally, the spring sports will start in April and they'll go through the end of June. Um, golf, tennis, track and field, baseball, softball, um, and the same thing, two practice weeks, seven competition weeks, and then an OSAA culminating week. Uh, the, the most exciting thing I feel about this is uh, season one. So season one starts this fall, uh, OSAA calendar year now starts August 31st. So we have some flexibility. Uh, OSAA has waived the um, out of season coach uh, requirements where, where coaches can't work with their kids uh, in off season uh, where they've waived that. So uh, essentially we have the ability in August 31st to work with kids uh, in outdoor activities. Um, we're going to wrap some guidance around that. I'm working with regional schools and we're going to come up with, uh, you know, what time um, of, of fall each sport can, can work. Um, but there also might be some possibility to compete in fall, uh, giving guidance, um, working with the district, with the superintendent, with the school board, uh, coming up with the proper plan. Uh, but there's hope there that, that we might be able to do something uh, as early as uh, mid-September maybe. So uh, again, this, uh, this plan is very creative, I think, very flexible, um, gives a lot of hope and, and we're excited about uh, being able to, to get coaches and, and, uh, and athletes together. Um, there's a lot here, that's it in a nutshell. Again, I, I ask you to go onto OSAA website and, and read all this for yourself, go through it and, um, and allow it to soak in. And the more times you read it and say it, the more sense it makes. <laughs> <laughs> Much like our <laughs> educational models, yes. Uh, any questions so far? I guess I can read too. I don't see any, but if there's not maybe in the question and answer, we can do that. Yeah, I'll hang out. All right. All right. Thank you. Guys. All right. Thank you, Rob Bonner. Yes. Certainly one of the hardest working people in our district, no doubt. Yeah, it's true. Well, we are ready for any questions you might have or input you have and excited to see if there's anything that we can answer today. I see a couple in the Zoom coming in. Will high school students be able to take honors classes for college credit? And I also saw a question on the Facebook kind of like that where they said, uh, well, in your example, you had math first period. What if a student doesn't have math? So that, that daily example schedule is, isn't the schedule that every student will have. It just shows the potential classes. So they will, um, to answer both those questions, uh, the counselor and our um, admin team are working to develop the schedule that kids need in cohorts. So yes, there will still be honors classes. And I believe they're working off the intricacies of the college credit classes as well. Also, our administrators are back in the buildings uh, full time and our secretarial staff are coming back. So. It gives you a little more access to communication at the building level. So feel free to make those contacts directly to your principal. They're eager to talk to you and they will sit down and answer any questions that you might have. We had another question about um, the homeschool partner program and it said, well, how does the funding work? Are they homeschool students or are they district students? And it's a really good question. It reminds me, uh, there was 
the, the term homeschool uh, means something different for everyone. And the reason we we're calling it the homeschool partner program is because that's a, a common term people uh, use for learning at home. So uh, with uh, the homeschool partner program students, they will be assigned a, a full-time teacher that will be the teacher of record that will be um, developing a personalized learning plan and supporting the, that family in their learning journey throughout the day, each and every day. So that term homeschool uh, is, is just kind of a colloquialism for um, right. learning at home. The other thing um, to think about with this model is that that student that's signed up in the Crook County Homeschool Support Program is a Crook County student. So you could access any of the advantages of your local school district. So there's things that are offered like technology and, um, you meal know, service. what's that? Meal service. You can ac access the nutrition services. You can, um, you know, have the special education as, as Dr. Hoff said, but you could also have access um, to any of the electives. There's also, uh, Mr. Olkers will be putting together activities and field trips, and I'm trying to remember some of the things study, he said. There's uh, weekly study groups, um, science experiments where kids come in to do science experiments. And if you got, if you find yourself in a snag, then he will sit down with you or your you and your child and work through things. Um, I've had just a little bit of experience with homeschooling, and it is very helpful and very common to have a teacher, a certified teacher assigned to a homeschool student. So you can get the kind of support you need. You're not off on your own, but you have as much flexibility and freedom as you want to. And we had some interest from people in this before this year, but with COVID coming up, it has spurred us on to go ahead and develop the program. And I think that one of the beauties of the homeschool support program is that you get to build in the amount of support and interaction you want with the school district. You get to pick your curriculum from a menu. And um, as far as the support, there's a, there's a, I believe it's a thousand dollars designated for you to um, spend on the curriculum options. And uh, the kind of follow-up question is, so is it just online? And it's, it's no, there's a menu of curriculum options not all are just online. There's some um, other ones as well. So. You can vary the degree to which it is. And then um, a few questions coming in about um, SPED and what the SPED students, uh, students on an IEP, what their schedule would look like. So we started to be, uh, get more specific in what was go going to be presented to special education. But then as I was talking to um, Colt Gill on a Zoom call this week, I found out that there's a, oh, it's about 70 pages long, a guidance document coming out around SPED. So there'll be very specific um, expectations. And I think the thing that you can count on, I love what Mona Boyd said. She said, I guarantee you that we will have special services for our special education students. And the way that we do that will be really built around what that IEP says and what the student needs. So I don't want to probably lay out any more details than I have right now because uh, Mona, actually maybe we should bring Mona on at the fireside chat next week if idea. the guidance is out. Yep. But I know it's going to be a very comprehensive document and we'll get back to you with more on that. You can always, again, uh, you can call in and talk to your principal. They can make some connections and get some answers for you. Or you can call Mona Boyd at the district office and she will definitely um, call and answer questions for you. Next Especially question. if you get specific questions. I can take this one or you can't. Let me know what you want. Uh, can you please give more info on the full online self-paced models? So that would be um, Is this, middle school and high school, okay, middle and high. Crook County, online options program are the self-paced models. So I can take that or you can take that. You can take it. So um, you want to talk some more, don't you? I, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm ready. Bring the questions. Give me some hard ones. Um, so <laughs> the uh, what the self-paced classes will look like is um, those are offered through a program called Fuel Education as well as Odysseyware. So you'll work with Natalie Eberhard and she'd be able to um, give you a demo. And that's where um, she is able to uh, work with a counselor to get your students the classes they need. Um, it's completely online. It's self-paced and she helps and monitors. 
but those are the uh, those are the softwares that that'll be through. Can and I add something here? Of course. So the courses are accredited, and the courses are building towards a Crook County High School diploma. The diploma would actually come through Crook County. Uh, that student that finishes that, I mean, they have to finish the same number of credits and the actual writing and the development of the courses is done. We call it powered through fuel ed or um, what's the other one? Uh, Odyssey, Wear. Odyssey Wear. But your, your diploma comes from Crook County School District. Um, Nellie Eberhard is the coordinator and the teacher of it. And um, she works with the principal, the counselor and the student and the family to make sure that it's leading that student right to the diploma. The Crick County High School Diploma. Good. You ready for another question? Let's let's do it. Are you able to post a Crick County High School schedule of all the classes in the periods they will be taught and by which teachers? Um, is that ready yet? No, but uh, great question. Uh, so literally today and probably right now, I don't know if she's still in the building, uh, uh, they are working on that. They're building the master schedule, uh, which will be able to say, here are the classes with the periods. Um, students will be in cohorts. So um, each grade level will have some cohort options. I think the last model I saw had 10 or 20 cohort options. So uh, they are developing it to that level now, the specific details. So that should be coming in the next week or two, I would believe. So cohorts means a group of students that are interacting with each other and they're contained in one group. And the way that they're developing those is by what the student wants to enroll in. So they'll look at what the students want and they'll say, okay, these students are pretty close in, in their goals and their classes. And then they'll formulate the schedules for that limited number of students. And then that will occur um, yeah, for every student. Yeah. Couple more questions. Uh, with, the elective, uh, with the elective options, is there any updated information on students being able to participate in band and choir? So I know my good friend, Rob Bonner, um, the OSA did have some updates on band and choir. Are you able to speak to those or? So I'm not completely versed on those. Okay. Um, a lot of that is uh, waiting for governor's orders after August 11th. They hope there's gonna be oh, some okay. information. So good the point. that is coming after that. So Janelle, stay tuned. We'll be tracking that closely for you and get you an answer um, here soon. There's one about the four, fifth blend at Oh yeah, three, four blend at Steensville. I know Jim's been working on three, that. Three, four. Um, we'll probably be able to give you some final information on that closer to the opening, but as it stands, if K through three is starting before fourth and fifth grade, then only half of the students would be coming. It would be the third graders because they would be cleared to be on site and the fourth grade would uh, be receiving the instruction similar to what the model that to the model that Dr. Hoff presented a little while ago. All right, a few more questions coming in. So Kirk County Middle School and Kirk County High School students, will the start and end times be the same times as distance learning? Yes, they will. So that schedule will look the same when kids are in school and also when kids are out of school. Uh, and what will the approximate start and end times be for the Kirk County Middle School? So transportation is still figuring out the logistics. Uh, if I were to take a bet, middle school is going to start around nine and end around three. Next question. So the way, the reason that's happening is because we're putting the teacher's preparation time at the beginning of the day, which will allow them to get all of their um, materials and technology set up when, when they're in, in that model. You ready for the next one? What is it? Will one, I think, will at least one of the four high school classes be an elective or will all four be core classes? No, they can take electives. Yep, so um, think about it this way. So uh, traditionally, so up until this year, students had taken a seven period day uh, for a semester, which is half a year. And there was usually one to two electives in there. Uh, moving forward uh, during next year, they're changing to four quarters throughout the, uh, the whole year. So for half of a year, you'll take two quarters. So you're actually taking eight classes in a half year, opposed to the traditional where you're only taking seven. So you certainly will have um, electives. They might, 
they, the, both of them might be in the second quarter or both of them might be in the first quarter, but you will have um, actually potentially more electives than you, you do if you look at it at the half year mark. Uh, more IEP, like specific IEP 504 questions. So what I can tell you, and Dr. Johnson kind of spoke to this, was that um, each IEP student, their case manager will be reaching out to them and developing a schedule and, uh, and supports that meet their IEP goals. So um, the, the kind of specific scheduling will be done uh, in collaboration with the IEP case manager. Uh, CUCC college credits, how does that work? I the believe, online model. yeah, I believe um, they are working on that right now. That's something we'll, uh, I don't want to give any misinformation. So we'll make sure to look into that one and get report out on that next week. I know they've been talking about it. I, and COCC has been planning their start and their communication. So uh, we're working on making sure that we're coordinating with them. Jason, did we answer the question about childcare that's on there? Uh, is there any support in school options or childcare for staff who are single parents with younger children? So is this, um, this a staff, staff person? Is this a staff person or is there a... any support to child care for staff who are single parents with younger children? We are in development. Yeah. Uh, we've actually had two meetings this week. Yeah, we're working uh, on the child with care. Child care, because we know that's a huge, huge issue for a lot of our families, whether schools, um, if schools aren't able to reopen, child care is a huge issue. So we've met with a couple different child care representatives and we want to get a nice, um, clear options of what parents and staff members have. And we are developing that. It should be out in the next couple of weeks, I would think. When I hear, um, is it said younger children? Uh, when I, if I hear pre, if they're preschool age, then um, I'm thinking that the, the parent would need to find childcare for that person or for those children when, when the teacher is teaching. But um, I, I just did not positive what that, question entails. With younger children, fourth grade. So I think they're saying their fourth grader might need child care. So we'll, we'll spell out those. Yeah. And call your principal because we've been talking about that. And we know that teachers, I mean, teachers, a lot of teachers have kids. And so we're trying to just set it up so that it's family friendly. So call your principal about that and you'll get better answers. And we did a, believe it or not, this is our second fireside chat of the day. And, um, we did an all staff fireside chat yesterday. Uh, so if you're a staff member, uh, you can, uh, Mr. Carr sent out a link to that and we have a full discussion on that. So uh, it was a long fireside chat though. So you'll, we've been yeah. working this week. We have, we got some things <laughs> done. <laughs> uh, somebody's wondering about starting in times at the elementary. Those, uh, they're still, we met with the elementary principals. Um, those aren't cemented yet. I would, think somewhere around between eight and nine start time <laughs> in time between 2.30 and 2.45. So you have to think of it like this. We're starting out like, what's the system going to look like? And then as it comes down to the actual start, we'll know if the kids are going to be here and we'll have all the transportation and we'll be able to access everything. But right now we're still working out details. We have the good um, big structure set up, but Details of start times and, and transportation, all those things are still being developed. I know it sounds like we're not yeah. giving specifics, but we're just not <laughs> quite there. We don't want to give you a like, hey, yes, your pickup bus stop is going to be at 847, um, but they, they will be around traditional school start times. Um, Stephanie is saying they're new to the district. Yeah, my daughter's a fourth grader. So yeah, those, those child care options for staff, we definitely are working on and we spelled out uh, and, and touch base with your principal as well or your direct supervisor. Yeah. I checked all the other <laughs> Facebook pages and I don't see any other questions and always they can Yes. Yep. We are excited. We are still moving forward. We've got a lot of great things. Our principals were all back today. Um, we were planning, we're, we're excited. We know that's gonna be a challenging year, but we are looking forward to serving our parents and families the best way we know how um, and have an option for whatever your particular family circumstances. One of the things we talked about today is many of the things that we're doing now in this upcoming year have never been done in public education. So we're having to make all of this as we go and develop it. 
the foundation is still the same. We know how to teach kids. We're just learning to use new tools, new schedules, and just figuring out the intricacies of, of how to offer it in this new way. Yeah, and you know, a parent asked, I think earlier, and I can't remember if we addressed it, like what does a classroom look like? And we had such a celebration this week where um, we were able to bring back our Jumpstart program. So those are students entering kindergartens and they just did their first week of in-person. And I think it's the Central Oregon Daily News uh, posted a, they did a story on it. So you can actually hear from students. You can see what the classroom looked like and we'll yeah. post that on our page. So definitely go check that out. And we were so thankful that our staff worked really hard to make sure the safety precautions were in place. Can't talk. I'm running out of words. Running. I've done my word count for the day. <laughs> you have. All right. So I think that that's going to wrap up this week. And if you have more questions, of course, just put them on there. And Jason Carr continually monitors uh, the questions and the incoming information from the community. So we'll get back to you and hope you have a great weekend. Take care.